Excuse me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today, in this class, for the next hour, we're going to look at quotes by Mark Twain. Uh, hi, Chow. How are you? Hi, Oakley. Uh, I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Can I help you? Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm pretty good. Uh, you're coming through a, a little choppy. Oh, I see. I'll adjust it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chow, do you know who Mark Twain is? Yes, I know. He's a American author, uh, sort of sarcastic, so critic <laughs> about the, the society. Uh, he's an interesting man, but I, I've never read in deep about his work. Okay. As, as far as I could hear you, yes, that's correct. But, Chow, I have to tell you, it sounds like you're calling me from a submarine. Where are you? In the South China Sea somewhere? Because it's not coming through very clearly. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Give it a shot. Okay. While we're waiting for Ch for Chow to return, uh, I will share with you the fact that Mark Twain is not even a real name. Actually, the real name of the real person is Samuel... Langhorn Clemens is his actual real name. Mark Twain is what we call in English a pen name. Okay, so uh, who knows why, but in, <laughs> in English culture, English speaking culture, some people don't want to admit who they are, so they create a pen name and they write pseudo kind of anonymously using a different name. Uh, Mark Twain's real name is Sam Samuel Langhorn Clemens. Hi, Michael. Hi, Oakley. Hi. How are you today? Doing great. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Considering it's okay. Hello, Joe. Uh, hello. Hi, Joe. Uh, where are you from? I'm from South Korea. Oh, really? No kidding. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, I'm glad to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And welcome back, Chow. How's your audio now? I don't know. How is it? Much better. Oh, yeah. Tip top. Cheerio. Okay. Uh, excellent. All right. We're, we're going to look today at some quotes by Mark Twain. Um, I have to share with you. I know this is my own opinion, uh, but I, I really like Mark Twain not only as an author. I can read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn and laugh out loud. I can't help myself. There are parts of that book that make me laugh out loud every time I read it, and I've read it a dozen times. Mm. If you want to understand American culture, there would be a good start. Read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and uh, Huckleberry Finn. That would go a long way to explain a lot. Uh, not only do I respect him as an author and enjoy him, but I also really respect this individual as just a nasty, cantankerous, anti-government, anti-imperialism, pro-civil rights, uh, loudmouth. <laughs> Ron Paul. Okay. Maybe if Mark Twain were reborn, he'd be Ron Paul. <laughs> Do you love Ron Paul? Uh, yes and no. Why no? Uh, well, I don't agree with all his views. 
about foreign policy? Or? Yeah, uh, no, I actually more I I more agree with his foreign policy and disagree with his domestic policy. But we're not going to talk politics, even though we're real close to the edge here talking about Mark Twain, uh, because he was quite political and quite outspoken in his views. I'm going to try to avoid politics, Joe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, I have to. Uh, welcome, Andrew. Howdy, howdy. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to look today at some quotes from Mark Twain, alias Samuel Clemens. His real name is Samuel Clemens. Okay, I will be amazed if anyone knows this. Trivia. Let's play trivia. Do any of you gentlemen know, what does Mark Twain mean? How did he come by this pseudonym? It's called a pseudonym or a pen name. Uh, how did he come up with that? Any idea? Andrew, Chow, Joe, Michael? Ooh. No idea. Okay, <laughs> I can, no I idea. can Google. No, I, I've already no. Googled it for you. But actually, okay. I already knew this because, uh, as I said, I'm a fan of Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Okay, Samuel Clemens, when he was young, worked on a steamship in the Mississippi River. Mississippi River being, the, of course, the largest river in North America. He worked on a steamship. And uh, um, a steamship... Well, I, I suppose the Yangtze or the Nile or the Amazon, every major river, tends to change. Uh, trees fall in the river, riverbanks swell and grow, and the current changes. So you have to be very, very careful when navigating a river. Uh, so one thing that uh, somebody on the ship had to always be watching the prow, the front of the boat, and watching the depth. Mark Twain refers to Mark two fathoms. Okay, uh, I th two fathoms. Fathoms are like six feet, uh, average European height. Six feet. So Mark two means twelve feet. The water's twelve feet deep. So we're getting close to where a uh, steamship shouldn't be. <laughs> okay, so it's like, warning, warning, Mark Twain, two fathoms. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it's also interesting, the word fathoms. I can't fathom. I can't fathom it. Hmm. Uh... Here's a very strange English expression that you guys can use. I'll share with you. I can't fathom what he's talking about. It means I can't understand something at all. Uh, which is a very interesting expression because the derivation is from looking down into the river to see how deep the water is. I can't fathom it. I can't see clearly. It's muddy. I don't understand. So a very interesting phrase there. Okay, all that aside. Uh, weird so, trivia. Um, so this Mark Twain, uh, as you explained, like in the, on the water, in the ocean, or where, uh, it's uh, with family name. Uh, you say that when he's... Uh, His real family name is Samuel... No, no, I understand. But uh, you said that he took this uh, pseudonym, pseudonym uh, when he uh, was like in Mississippi uh, River, yeah. He worked on a steamship. Yeah, and there, like, it's a slang and it's a word like Mark Twain, twelve, yeah. Yeah, well, we know actually probably most American, probably ninety-nine point nine percent of Americans don't know that, have no idea that Mark Twain actually means something. This is really old, 150-year-old English from uh, riverboats. It, it's like a navigational 
navigation speech from 150 years ago. So uh, probably you can ask 100 Americans and most likely I'm the only okay. one who would know that. <laughs> okay, I'll give you uh, the same kind of question. What does what yeah. that mean? Well healed. Well healed. Well healed. Yeah. Well healed. Oh, kind no of way. the same question. Question as Mark Twain. It, it, well, it, it is. That's very interesting. Um, that's a good question. I don't know if I know the derivation um, or the entomology of that expression, but of course I know what it means. What? Well healed means you are raised very well. You are raised properly. Yeah, it's basically a rich man. And the, the derivation is, uh, yeah. the idea yeah. of this expression is the same kind of historical that in... Um, 1801, I think, uh, the Americans who who have like uh, good uh, shoes, and uh, they were named like uh, something with uh, well uh, long heeled and uh, short heeled uh, that were poor Americans. So from that times, uh, from that uh, those times, like um, this expression comes long okay. heels. Uh, and the short heels and the well please, heels is like. Please don't don't be telling everybody in the verbling world that Americans used to wear high heels. Yes, it's true, but it's embarrassing. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Just kidding, Michael. That's very interesting. Uh, yes, I no. actually I understand that. I, I get it. Yeah. I read an arti uh, article, like business article, and there were like uh, this well healed, and I was thinking, what is that? You're like, absolutely Google's correct. Well, well I know I've read that too, as well as in Europe, um, and people wore high heels. They wore big shoes, so they didn't have to step in the poop on the street. That's no joke, because there was actually sewer in the street. It, not just in America, but also Europe. It's very embarrassing for all us Europeans and Americans. It's really not a part of Western civilization. I, I like to share. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's true. But you're absolutely correct. I, I totally believe your explanation because there are definitely other idioms that have to do with the same idea, the same concept. So, yeah, interesting, weird. Okay. I, um. Let's get to some quotes. I'm going to do a screen share with you, and I'm curious. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a quote. First of all, I'm curious if you guys have ever heard this. Secondly, I'm curious. Uh, I want to know if you can explain it to me. Do you understand the meaning of this quote? Sometimes Mark Twain is very straightforward. I mean, wham, in your face, straightforward. And sometimes he's very tongue in cheek. Uh, mm, he's very mm, uh, ironic and cynical, sarcastic. Hmm. So be mindful of that as we as we uh, look at some of his quotes. Uh, sometimes he's being very facetious, and sometimes he's very straight up. Uh, Joe. Yes. Uh, okay. Go ahead and read this one for me. Okay. Please. Uh, it is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than, than to open one's mouth and remove all doubt. Oh, uh, yeah. Friend. Yeah. Have you ever heard that before? Uh, yep. I think I heard a similar one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now... <laughs> what do you think of this quote? Uh, do you understand the meaning? I mean, uh, it's better not to say anything if, if he's going to say something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Joe. Good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better that people think you're an idiot than to actually talk and prove you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Michael, what do you think of this quote? True or not true? Agree or disagree? Yeah, I've had uh, kind of the same, but uh, not in this construction. Like, um, yeah, as you said, like uh, um, it's better to do not say anything if you do not know at that subject, like uh, something. 
but on yeah. the uh, contrary, uh, it's better to to say something instead to uh, uh, always to stay with your mouth uh, closed because you will not develop. Nah. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I understand your point. You'll be well, stupid when, uh, always. You'll when be you're stupid learning, always. when you're learning, no one will English. correct you. <laughs> when you're learning English, you're that's dev you're you're absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, you've got to practice. So yeah, you got to open okay. your mouth. Okay, uh, I just uh, for the sake of disagreement, I will say in this way that uh, <laughs> if you always stay with uh, your mouth closed, and you 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 want to show to people that you are not stupid, you are you are like. Um, um, you're smart, uh, you'll remain stupid because of that. No one will correct you, no one will give you, uh, help to you. But if you open your mouth and you say stupid things, uh, someone will say always to you, like, um, um, will correct you and you'll become smarter uh, through the time. So, that's it. Okay. I don't agree uh, with Michael, this, thank you. thank you for playing devil's advocate or playing the devil's advocate another english expression which is also very old oh, we're into very old Eng english idioms today um, can't be helped we're talking about mark twain uh, do you know what it means to play the devil's advocate andrew mm. as michael just demonstrated for us <laughs> no no i haven't <laughs> no Okay. Yeah, when, you, when you argue a point, even you you don't believe the point. You're just actually arguing just to continue the conversation. Or uh, you argue something even though you may not believe it yourself. Mm -hmm. You're just playing the devil's advocate. An advocate is somebody who speaks for someone like a lawyer. So you're playing the devil's lawyer. You're arguing something you don't even care or you don't believe in. Just to continue a conversation. Uh, not exactly apologetic, Chow. Um, okay, you know, say that I totally believe in global warming and that CO2 emissions are going to kill us all. But I argue against it, even though I personally actually agree. If I'm arguing against it just to make a point, just to continue a discussion, or just to foment start discussion, then I'm just playing devil's advocate. Not really it is what more I like think. Nonsense than apologetic argument. Yeah. <laughs> Rather it's nonsense. Yeah, it's not apologetic. It's not exactly nonsense. It's just uh, trying to get people to broaden their minds. Please think of all views. Let, okay, just for the sake of argument. Oh, ooh, well, there's an English expression. For the sake of argument, let's just say that global warming is not real. Uh, okay, that's just to play devil's advocate, just for the sake of argument, just so we can look at all sides of the discussion. Yes, That's sir. kind of the idea. Um, okay, Mustafa. Welcome, welcome. Howdy. Mustafa, how are you? Is your microphone working there? Hello? Hello. Hello. I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, could Hello. you do me a favor and read this next quote which I have highlighted? Yes, okay. Uh, edge is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Amen. <laughs> Mustafa, do you agree or disagree? Mustafa, do you agree or disagree? Well, first of all, do you understand this quote? I can't understand the quotes. Can you explain okay. Okay, first part? First part. Mind over matter. Okay, excellent. Well, here we go. We we are just on a really old idioms day here. Okay, mind over matter. Um, 
Yes. Okay, I can understand how this is confusing. Mind over an, an issue of mind over matter, or it's just mind over matter. Actually, this is a common expression in English. And what it means is that the power of your mind, your will, the will to do something, the will to win the basketball game, the will to survive cancer, those things are mind over matter. Your brain can actually win out. So age is an issue of mind over matter. It's all in your head, in other words. Um, so it's very common to say, oh, oh that's, that's, just a, that's just mind over matter. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, have you ever heard stories about people who take placebo medicine? Okay. They're, they're just a placebo is fake medicine, a sugar pill. Okay. They uh, they're given a placebo, which does nothing. There's no actual medication, but they still get better. They recover from cancer or whatever disease they have. That is mind over matter. That is classic mind over matter. So w when we use this phrase, we're, we're talking about the power of the mind, the power of will to do things. So age, okay, is an issue of mind over matter. Now, the second part is the play on words, Chow. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. So this means something different. If you, uh, okay, the first part, if you don't mind, also classic English phrase. If you don't mind, could I put my coat here? If you don't mind, can I come inside and warm up? If you don't mind, can I use your bathroom? All right, we, we often use this phrase. If it doesn't bother you, it's a polite phrase. Uh, so he's using this very ironically. If you don't mind, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you don't care about your age, then your age doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. So age is an issue of will, mental power. If you don't care about it, then it doesn't affect anything. Uh, what do you think, Andrew? Agree or disagree? Totally agree, I think. Totally agree. Really great, great quote, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. I love you, man. Because <laughs> I'm getting old, man. <laughs> but I don't mind. So it don't freaking matter. Zhao, what do you think? Well, for the sake of you, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, but, man. And, and sometimes I thought about that. I think sometimes... Uh, the people realize they are getting old and make them get old. I mean, the age makes them have some psychological effect on them and they get old, physical elder. Uh, okay. But it, it is still some physical change in, on the, uh, the physical body side. But let's say, yes, if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Okay. Do, Chow, what do you think of the idea of mind over matter, that the brain... Well, can do I, things that the body can't. Yeah, I, I remember I read a book. I thought it was a popular book it called The Secret or The Rule of uh, Attraction or something. If you think about something, this thing can be come true if you keep thinking about it. And yeah, if you have you a disease and you keep thinking of it, it can be better. And accordingly, you do something to make you feel better and the disease can be reco recover. But uh, somewhat, because I'm, I'm a, I'm believing Taoism, and the basic idea is the mind can change something, and to. But I still think there is a physical part. A yeah, I mean, like Taoism, basically, it's all about your perspective. Yeah. If you know your life is depressing, that's because that's the way you look at it. If but, you want to. Yeah, Look at it a different way, then it's not. Yeah, but you still need to uh, to step on the nature, the nature rule. The people will get old, and you need to fit into that situation to realize that. No, Joe. No, we won't. 
we won't get old. <laughs> okay. <Deny I it>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm totally messing with you. Ciao. Read this next one, please. Sure. Get your facts first, then you can destroy them as you please. Oh, well, this one is great. <laughs> I agree. I love this one. This goes out to every government on the planet. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Joe, what, what do you think of this quote? Get your facts first. Do you understand that? Uh, yes. Uh, check your fact first. Check if yeah. it's the, if it, if what you're saying is true. Check if it, if what you're saying is true first. That's right. And then you can distort them. <laughs> do, you, do you know the meaning of this verb distort? Uh, twist. Yeah, twist. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Very good, Joe. Thank you. That's exactly right. Distort is twist. Right. Um, what is twist? Twist. Uh, well, okay. Hang on. I've got to. I've got to go to a visual here. All right. Michael. Twist. 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 Mm -hmm. Twist. That's twist. No, but or this, it's also uh, a dance. Beep. A dance. Beep. Ba, 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 peppermint twister. Well, I know a little dance, and it goes like this. Beep, ba, ba, peppermint twister. Okay, it's also a dance. <laughs> you sorry. had to sing the whole thing. <laughs> I had to see that and, and hear that. I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone. <laughs> sorry. But what uh, is the meaning of this uh, saying? I don't understand. Okay, get your facts first. Okay, understand what you're talking about. Make sure you know the details and the numbers and the facts. Then you can distort the facts. <laughs> okay, do you guys know what a spin doctor is? Mustafa, what is a spin doctor? Yes. A, which can be uh, actually a, a person, or it can... Uh, we can talk about spinning information. Or putting spin on information. No. Do, do you know that? No, uh, Bill no? Doctor. Oh, oh, you're Mustafa. Oh, you're sorry. from Egypt. You have to know this, okay? Um, uh, put a spin on something is a common phrase. If if you put a spin on Andrew, do you know this? What I'm talking about? So you manipulate the information. Uh, yes. In, in your advantage. Your yes, yes, yes. Benefits. Exactly correct. You manipulate the facts. You change the information so that it reflects your own point of view. Thank you. Perfect. What your and my government are doing to us every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have the facts and then they just spin them the way they want to to make themselves sound good. Thank you, President Obama. Okay, well, you know, they they all do it. Uh, <laughs> Ciao. Stop it. You make me laugh. Uh, okay, uh, here's another one. Mustafa, read this one for me. This is a word again. Uh, Could you please uh, say the word that you uh, told me again? Bill which doctor? word again? Could you write it or spell it? Uh, what word? Bill Doctor. Spin Doctor? I, Bill I wrote doctor. it. Bill Doctor. Spin Doctor. Spin Doctor. S P I N. Spin. The verb spin the, is just yes. like very similar to twist. If I uh, spin, I go around and around in a circle. Uh, twist, spin. yes. Yes, twist. Uh. It's in the um, Verbling chat. Do you have um, Verbling chat? Uh, excuse me? So, Spin Doctor means a fake doctor? No, What's it doesn't that? work. Fake, fake doctor. Uh, it doesn't work. Okay, I'll put it in Google. Sorry, Joe. Uh, st does spin doctor mean a uh, fake doctor who's not giving out the proper prescription? A, or? a spin doctor. For example, chief spin doctor of America would probably be the press secretary. Uh, the person so in charge of speaking to all of 
the journalists, all of the media in behalf of the president and uh, that branch of government, he's got to make everything sound good for the government. He's a spin doctor. He, everything uh -huh. that happens, oh, okay, well, uh, you know, something horrible happens in the world and he has to uh -huh. somehow make it sound like it was planned okay. or it was a good thing. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have an easy a literal doctor. No. No, no, not not a literal doctor. Yes. He's okay. doctoring okay. he's ah, doctoring okay. information. Okay. Ah, okay. He's putting a spin on it. He's ah, okay. interpreting the the facts in a different way to make them look right for him. Just like the quote we're looking at. That's why I brought it up. Um, yeah, um, Chow's pretty close. Uh, somebody who's a it, it uh, sounds propaganda. <laughs> Propagandist. Yeah. Okay. Um, what okay. about is a spin doctor? What's that? Uh, thanks. All doctor, uh, or, or reporter is a spin doctor in Egypt. <laughs> well, in, in Egypt, and sorrowfully, I'm very sad to say, in most of the world at this point. Um, yeah, okay, well... That's getting very close to politics. But when I was younger, news used to be more even, uh, even-handed, we can say. Even-handed, meaning fair to all sides. But now, you're, uh, I'm, I hate to say it, but I agree with you, Mustafa. Not just Egypt, but everywhere. News yeah. is, you yeah. just can't believe the news anymore. What has happened? Oh, my goodness. Ah. Uh. Okay, you're making me depressed, Mustafa. Bring Let's some continue. Bring some and it, it's all us. It is, uh, it is bad. Yeah. And well, that, okay, you got yeah. it. You understand, spin doctor. That's it. Okay. Read the next one for me. Yes, I got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, go to heaven for the climate, hell for the company. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty serious. Okay. Uh, do you understand the meaning of this quote? And please don't anyone uh, no. <laughs> this is not in cool. the room or out of the room or watching this, this video, cool. please don't take this to be as a religious quote. It's not. Okay. Uh, Michael, do you, do you understand this? <coughs> Hell, a go to, uh, for the climate. No, 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 no. Hell for the company. No. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. This is interesting. This is very cultural. Joe, do you do you get this? No, actually, I don't get the meaning of this one. Okay. Uh, Andrew, do you get this? Um, it is quite uh, difficult. I think uh, it's about. Uh, relationship with uh, other people uh, so that you can't uh, uh, share uh, wow, so okay. th there are a few, a few people uh, in heaven that you can share uh, uh, a pleasant uh, climate I mean <laughs> <laughs> okay uh. Uh, that's getting a lot closer. Chow, what's your interpretation of this quote? This is super interesting because uh, as an American, this this is like bam in your face and it's, it would be quite obvious, which is not to say that you guys don't understand. It's, it's very deeply cultural. So this is really interesting for me. Chow, do, do you understand uh, this? Well, what? from my interpretation, maybe it is not... Okay. Correct, but I thought it means uh, the, the company doesn't mean companies means uh, some people well stay with you, right? Okay, uh, wow. All right, go to heaven for the climate. You don't want to be a wonderful, pure, perfect person so you can go to heaven because everyone there is boring. <laughs> yeah. All right, you want to be a saint. You're going to be really bored when you go to heaven. Okay? You can go there for the climate. It's nice weather mm -hmm. as opposed to hell where it's burning fire forever. 
hell, of course, would be eternal burning pain. But on the other hand, nicer people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you'll have more fun. Okay, this is very sarcastic. Here we go. American sarcasm, right here. Boom, in your face. It's totally... It's, it's not to be taken seriously. This is very, very sarcastic. Deeply sarcastic. And it, I find it very interesting that none of you guys really kind of really got it. This is... An American would understand this immediately. This is just so in-your-face sarcasm. Um, Mark Twain... Okay, I, I don't want to talk politics and I don't want to talk religion, but... Mark Twain was somewhat, okay, I'm understating this. Mark Twain was somewhat uh, uh, skeptical about religion, shall we say, and skeptical about government. He just really didn't believe everything <laughs> he heard. So, hey, yeah. so could you be skeptical? Skeptical? Okay, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I always forget how to spell this word. Yes, uh, on Google Chat, please. Yeah, okay. Skeptical. Is skeptical with a K or a C? Oh, God. K. C. No? K. C. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. You guys are a big okay. help. Thanks a lot, man. Okay, uh, on Google <laughs> Chat. All right, coming at you. Skeptical. I think it's a K. I mean, the first one's okay. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that's right, but I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> okay. I doubt a little bit. It doesn't mean skeptical. I doubt completely, 100%. It doesn't mean I'm 100% against something. It means I have my doubts. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Uh, Apple started selling phones in China. Chow, did you get your new phone? No, I don't use Apple. All oh, right. Well, okay. Everybody thinks that Apple is going to make, you know, several billion dollars in profit. I'm skeptical. <laughs> I don't necessarily think every Chinese person. I have my run phone. out. Huh? What's that? I have my dog. Uh, skeptical. I have my dog. You have what? Mustafa? I, I doubt, doubt. 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 Okay, okay. Uh, um, doubt. All right. Doubt. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, Mustafa. Ow. Like, uh, yes. wait, wait. Doubt. Ow. I'm going to ow. Bring my mouth together. Doubt. Cow. How now, doubt. brown doubt. cow? I doubt the cow. Brown doubt. <laughs> there we go. All right. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mark Twain is a bit of a... He, maybe he's a jerk. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe he is. Uh, Michael. Try this next one here. Can you read this for me? Don't... Uh, okay, don't go around saying the world owes you a living. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. It was here first. You came after the world. That's right. You owe the world something. Okay, I agree with him. You do? <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, I will say another one. There is no, there is no, there is no fairness in the world. Don't expect fairness. Yeah, there's no Can such thing as a. Uh, no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> Near the freedom. <laughs> uh, okay. Obviously, you understand it, Michael. You gave me another quote, which pretty much means the same thing. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, is another one. Um, Andrew. Yeah, because that is like uh, I know some people. They say like, "Oh, uh, I I'm not rich. I'm I want to be rich. I don't uh, have money." Uh, and they complaining <laughs> always, complaining like, "I was born in a bad family, uh, and someone was born in a rich family, and politicians." Oh. 
So yeah, nice wine, Michael. Nice wine. That's that's really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, here's another American quote for you. Wine. Okay, to wine the verb means. Eh, eh, uh, he's rich and I'm poor. Eh. Okay, <laughs> wine. Here, here's another uh, American quote for you. Michael, would you like some cheese with your wine? <laughs> because, of course, wine and, you know, the noun wine to drink sound exactly the same. So cheese and wine go together. All right. It's a joke. But uh, uh, Andrew... Oh, yeah, okay, Chow, just a second on that idea. Andrew, I'm wondering, do you have a similar expression in Russia that means something close to this? Uh, maybe there is, but I don't remember. <laughs> okay. It's, 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 I think it's pretty straightforward because... Uh, yeah. Like uh, in psychology of successful people, I think, so if so, nobody owes you something. You don't you have to go and get get it. <laughs> right. Earn it. Yourself. Yeah, earn right. Uh, Chow, uh, you're talking about a quote from President Kennedy, okay, where he basically takes this same idea but expresses it uh, to talk about the country. Yeah, I thought the United States. Talk about the country. Yeah. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yes. I grew up near Boston, where Kennedy's from, so I've been practicing the accent for a long time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, uh, on that note, I'm going to jump forward to this quote, since we're getting all patriotic. Uh, Joe, can you read this one for me? Okay, uh, patri patriotism. Patriotism is uh, supporting your country all, all the time and your government when it deserves it. Well, there you go. Uh, Joe, do you agree or disagree? Uh, I don't quite get the meaning of this. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's look at it a little further. Joe, do you know what patriotism is? Like a uh, love for the love for its uh, love for the country. That's right. Um, uh, Pater in Latin is uh, father. Uh, that's the root of this word. Patriotism is from father, like fatherland. Um, that's right. So patriotism. That's right. Is a love for your country. Some people confuse love for their country with love for their government. Exactly. Hmm. Are those things different, Michael? Love for your country, love for your government. Should Are those the same or are they different? Um, usually, um, uh, like uh, polit uh, politicians, they imply that it's the same thing. Uh, if you love your country, you should love your government and vice versa. So. Yeah. I like, the, I like the fact that you use the verb imply. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. But, of course, uh, you can uh, look from your perspective. If you li uh, do not love your government, you can say that I love my country but not government. And vice versa, <laughs> no, 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 vice versa, you can say. So, um, yeah, I agree with that quote. All right. Mustafa, what do you think? Yes. Yeah, do you understand this quote? Uh, yeah, patriotism is supporting your country all the time. Uh, yes, I agree with this. You, yeah. Uh, you know, not to be callous, not to be rude, but Mustafa's from Egypt, where the government has got, had some problems lately, obviously. I mean, yeah, okay. we all know that. Yeah. But, uh, all, uh, but, but all people here are patriotism. Uh, yes, it is quite obvious to me, anyway, that Egyptians love their country. All Egyptians, yeah. even though they have problems with their government. Yeah. Um, right, yes. I, I think it's very fitting. Uh, for a lot of us, not just the Egyptians. government uh, has a problem with uh, the Egyptians. 
<laughs> the government has a problem. Uh, okay. Uh, that's kind of sadly funny. The government has a problem with the country. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Andrew, let's take a look at the next one here. Uh, forgiveness is a fragrance that the violet sheds on the heels on the heel that has crushed it. Okay, now this is a pretty deep metaphor. Uh, Andrew, can can you grasp the meaning here that uh, Mark Twain uh, is trying to uh, convey? Fragrance. What is? I just I can't understand some words. <laughs> so. uh, sh sure, let's sh let's break it down. Um, fragrance is a smell, usually a ah, smell. nice. Okay. Nice smell, a pleasant smell, like perfume or flowers. And uh, sheds. Usually, okay, let me be a little clearer. A nice smell may be cookies or fresh bread, but we wouldn't call that a fragrance, usually. A fragrance is usually really often related to perfume, flowers, the smell of a woman. Uh... Yeah, okay. Things that smell really nice. <laughs> a baby. Baby smell nice. Okay, anyway. Fragrance, pleasant smell. Okay, Andrew? Do you know what a violet is? Violet is like a flower. It's a flower yes, no? a very small, sort of fragile, purple flower. That's correct. All right. So... And I still yeah, can't is. understand understand the meaning. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, the violet sheds on the heel that is crushed. Chow, can you can yeah. you grasp the meaning here? This is a difficult one. I I know this is pretty hard. Uh, yes, I think that means uh, you step, you crush the flower, but the flower give you the fragrance. Uh, you right. kill uh, their lives, but they still give. Attributed to you and without any feedback. That's right. the The violet makes a beautiful smell, even though you have crushed it. Uh, it gives back something pleasant and nice and positive, even though it has been stepped on and crushed. Um, that's okay. I think you got it. That's exactly right. So forgiveness is like that. So when you see a phrase in English, forgiveness is blah, 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 uh, this is a metaphor. This is meaning forgiveness is like the smell that a flower, the smell of a flower after you step on it, basically, okay? The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. That the is heel a, is, a, is good one. the foot, right? The heel is the foot, uh, yes. Uh, okay. um, the back of the foot is that part. The back of your foot is the heel, right? So this is is pretty much just saying a flower you stepped on. Uh, I like this one. It's kind of I don't know. It's nice and it's real. Joe, do you like this? I do. Uh, do you? Uh, <laughs> yes, Do you understand I, this? Yes, I think it's uh, it's. Um, yeah, I, I I'm amazed by the fact that Mark Twain, who is a cynical, uh, cynical Mark Twain himself, says something like this. Joe, that's very perceptive, uh, and I agree with you, and that's why I actually am sharing it with you. Um, I was not familiar with this quote when I was researching for this class, and I found this one in a Joe. I'll tell you what, I thought exactly what you thought. I, t I t couldn't agree more. I was very impressed. Like, wow, I'm used to very cynical and skeptical quotes. Uh, I'm not used to something so deep and kind of poignant. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, Joe, how about you? Okay, let's get back to sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Try this one here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, this is so true. <laughs> uh, Joe, do you understand the, the meaning of this? What is this really saying? What does it mean? Uh, maybe he's trying to say that uh, when you are in the majority, uh, you should think if it's really correct, if it's really right to right. be on the majority side of the things. Right. Is it really correct, or are you just following the crowd? Um, Joe, have you ever heard the expression herd mentality? Herd? I think I can get the meaning, maybe, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, like a bandwagon, <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking on a bandwagon. Very good. Jump on the bandwagon. Jump on the bandwagon, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, Joe, it is very much like that. Um, you're right. Herd mentality means you follow the herd. If the sheep are walking that way, then you're going to walk that way too because everyone else is doing it, so you're going to do it. Like if everyone I mean, else buys an iPhone, then you have to go buy an iPhone because everyone else is. Right. You, you should question yourself or uh, question the theory if you're following. That's right. Am I doing it because it's right or am I doing it because everyone else is doing it, saying it, thinking it, whatever? Yeah, I love this one. Michael, do you like this? Do you, do you believe it? I believe it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you analyze, you always do that something someone else did. Uh -huh. no, I don't. Maybe it's not uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, majority, but some percentage of people small, but they did, and you do as, uh, as they... Okay. Well, uh, last night I slept in a bathtub full of green jello. Did you? <laughs> some some crazy people <laughs> slept last night. The same. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, so what one. is? It is time to stop and reflect. What is the meaning of re reflect? Well, pause and reflect. Reflect. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, excellent. Um, reflect can be a verb, and it has two different meanings. Um, ref to reflect means the light bouncing off, uh, for instance, water or glass. If you look out on a lake and you can see the reflection of the trees on the other side of the lake in the water. It, it, the water reflects the light. But in this case, uh, if I'm going to say a person, uh, the subject is a person, a person reflects, then they think about, think about seriously. Think about it in a, often it means to think about matters from the past or matters from past experience. But it can also mean just to think very deeply and uh, carefully. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mustafa, go ahead and read this one. Yes. All okay. right. A man who carries a cat by the tail learns something he can learn in no other way. Oh, what yeah. Is good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think that means, Mustafa? Yeah. I can't understand. Well, I Mustafa, so. I want you to go outside of your house right now and grab a cat and pick it up by its tail. You're going to learn something. Yeah. <laughs> You're definitely going to learn what? something. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Uh, to be crazy. Yes, it would be. Uh, to be crazy. It, so there you go, Mustafa. If you do something crazy... And it may be painful, and you may get hurt, but you will understand that the way that no other person will yeah. understand that. Uh, if I say that I slept in a bathtub full of green jello last night, well, then that's something I understand that you guys probably don't. <laughs> uh, okay. Andrew, have you ever carried a cat by its tail? No, <laughs> I think I wouldn't try. <laughs> <But> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, but can you understand how uh, <laughs> how that somebody who did might understand the whole idea of carrying around a cat by its tail uh, differently than anybody else would? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some, I think, uh, uh, in my understanding, uh, uh, there is something uh, you have to do in order to uh, to truly understand it. You have to, to truly do understand. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh. Got any kids, Andrew? No. No. Uh. Chow, you don't have any children yet, right? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yes. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. Joe, do you have any children? Uh, no. No? No. Michael, no. you don't have any children. I know that. No. Mustafa, you have any children? No. Okay. This is one cat that I have swung by the tail that you guys have no idea what it's like when you watch that baby come out. It's the most joyous, terrifying horrible, wonderful thing you'll ever experience. <laughs> I have swung that cat around by the tail. You guys will, hopefully, I, I really hope each and every one of you has a chance to grab that cat by the tail. Um, related expressions. Not enough room to swing a cat I by the tail. What's that? I, Sorry? I saw some children do it. <laughs> swing, a, swing a cat I by the tail. It's <laughs> funny. Okay, don't encourage children. Children who are watching Verbling, do not swing a cat by its tail. Yeah, no, it is wrong. No, no, no. Children who are watching Verbling, do not do yes. this. No, children, don't, don't listen to. <laughs> no children in Verbling. <laughs> Mark okay. Twain was schizophrenic. Don't listen to uh, no, no, no. ill people. Right. <laughs> Mark Twain was a cat abuser. Do not listen to this verbling recording. <laughs> warning, warning. Okay. Um, On the if, loud. <laughs> if, okay, uh, I like this. I'm sharing this last one here. Not enough room to swing a cat. Okay, if you go to your friend's apartment and it's very, very small, you may tell someone else, yeah, I went to Joe's apartment and there's just there's not enough room to swing a cat by the tail. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's very small. Okay. The other new is the class grabbing a cat or not. What's that? Carrying a cat or not. Say again? That's the next class. We're carrying a uh, cat from the deal. A cat? The next class, I told you this, Mustafa, I promise. We're carrying the cat from the deal. <laughs> oh. oh. Or okay. no, if you will, I will come with you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So he, Mustafa's forcing my hand. I have to share one more. Um, if you have a tiger by the tail or take a tiger by the tail, it means that you have committed to a situation that is going to be, well, like grabbing a tiger by the tail. <laughs> you can't let go. If you let go then he's going to bite your face off. But on the other hand, you have no choice because you can't hold it forever. A very Isn't bad nice situation. Side. You've committed to something that's going to kill you, possibly, but you can't get out of it. Uh, so so this one means just stuck, stuck in a bad situation? Yeah, you, you got a tiger. He's got a tiger by the tail. Uh, uh, okay. Like, uh, okay. Not um, this week. Next week, inshallah. Well... Well, like, you know, you married a complete lunatic. Well, you're married. You're committed now, but she's crazy. He's got a tiger by the tail. I don't know what he's going to do. Okay. Uh, I've got another class to teach. TOEFL. Speaking. We're looking at the whole test. Coming right up. Bye. Got to go. Yeah. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you.